Okay, so I'm painting over an old 11 by 14 inch panel here. I'm painting with five colors and titanium white. I've got uh, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, glycerin crimson, burnt sienna, cadmium yellow medium, and titanium white. I'm using liquid original as my medium. I've got odorless mineral spirits in a brush washer. Probably be using natural bristle flats, number eight and number six. So one of the things I like about painting over old panels is it sort of frees you up to experiment. So today I'm gonna to experiment with sort of a different composition for me and then also I'm really gonna to try to push the looseness in the paint application. All right, so here is the scene I'm working with. Uh, one of the challenges here is having this landmass behind these trees that are in the foreground, uh, but I do like the sense of depth that's created. I may need to create some interest out in this area either with some rocks or land um, there are islands out there, Farallon Islands, but they're obscured by fog at the moment, but I could maybe suggest those or include those. Okay, starting with a mixture of titanium white and ultramarine blue. For now, I just want to break down the pattern into light and dark. So these will be the trees in the foreground or the, I don't know, I, I'm not sure what they are, if they're cypress or juniper or whatever. So the dark will be, again, the foreground trees and the light will be everything else. So I'm gonna to try to keep the distant land a very light value so that I you know, maintain that light dark uh, structure. All right, so for the dark, I'm using uh, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and a touch of cadmium yellow medium. I find it enjoyable to paint in a way that's really uncomfortable for me, you know, where I feel completely off balance. You know, the longer you paint, you get into sort of habits, you can get comfortable and you know, you can often get almost formulaic. And so I feel like it's good to get out and shake it up a bit, just play around. Not only do you learn things, but actually, it, you know, it's quite enjoyable. I might kind of suggest some land going down in the foreground here. Just focusing on shapes as usual. All right, so I don't like how, you know, the panel is sort of divided in half. Uh, I want to have these trees or these bushes, shrubs, whatever, kind of come down a bit on this side, something like that. Yeah, I think that's a little better. All right, I think I'm going to have the horizon at about a third down from the top, something like that. Maybe I'll bring a few branches up a little higher over here. But that's the basic idea, very simple. All right, I've mixed up a mid-tone gray here using titanium white, ultramarine blue, and uh, burnt sienna, suggesting the land mass out here. And I plan to let you guys know if I feel like, you know, that I'm struggling with the, the limited palette that I've put out. I don't think I will, honestly. But I will let you know how it goes. Maybe run that off the top there. And as I mentioned, I want to keep this landmass light in value so that, again, the, this whole section here is light, this is dark, and that's, that's the composition. Very simple. All right, titanium white, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of this dark mixture here for the sky color. I'm not using any liquid here, just kind of applying the paint directly. You know, like directly out of the tube. So it's pretty thick. All right, for the ocean, I'm using a mid-tone gray-green using ultramarine blue uh, and burnt sienna and a touch of cadmium yellow medium and alizarin crimson. I can tell already I might need to go a little bit darker with this because I do want there to be, you know, white water that stands out around the land in the distance. Okay, I've added a little more ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow medium. Just a little bit darker. All right, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, uh, cadmium yellow medium, and a bit of uh, alizarin crimson. Just kind of put some green in here to suggest the foreground. All right, pure titanium white here. I want to add this white water here so I can adjust the values of the surrounding water and also these headlands. 
because this titanium white is as light of a value as I can create. All right, so a darker blue-green, I've added some phthalo blue to the ultramarine blue, titanium white, and cadmium yellow medium. And I'm gonna add this in here to see what sort of contrast I can get between the white water and this darker water. I still feel like I have nice separation between the foreground and the background. So, you know, the value of this, even though it's darker, seems to be light enough. Okay, and I added a bit of yellow in here because I was seeing some warmer tones in this area as it gets closer to the shore. There are some little areas of darker blue out here. I'm gonna use this number eight natural bristle as long as possible. And who knows, maybe I'll be able to use it for the whole painting. All right, dipping into my dark mixture here, adding some darks to the distant land. And I think out here, uh, having it just a bit darker will help to draw the eye in this direction. And I will be looking for, you know, some of the subtle shifts that are in the land mass out here. Uh, there's some nice greens and even uh, orange tones. Again, I wanna make sure that, you know, the value is such that this does recede and stays in the background. Uh, these plants are gonna get a little bit darker, so I think, I think it's still okay. All right, so I have a light mixture here of titanium white, cadmium yellow medium. Uh, burnt sienna and there's a touch of alizarin crimson in here as well and I'm going to add some warmth to these distant hills here trying to keep the brush strokes very simple and direct and trying to keep the brush loaded as well I want to kind of keep this warm shape unified so when I break up a shape I want to break it up using unified shapes if that makes sense as opposed to having a bunch of random little shapes. Okay, so here is a darker tone to suggest some of the grass on the hill. All right, another dark mixture. This is ultramarine blue and uh, lizard crimson. I don't want to make this drop off a little bit more dramatic here. All right, and maybe suggest a few tree trunks. And ideally, I would keep this dark shape unified as well, so I'm going to try to do that. I'm squinting at the trees and looking for uh, shapes that look interesting that I can incorporate into the painting. All right, I like these shapes. I feel like this shape here, I want to work with that. All right, I want the dark branches to sort of reach up, you know, to partially, not obscure, but pass over the distant land. In the past, I would avoid uh, that sort of thing. I would, you know, I would uh, have a clear separation between the two and I wouldn't have like branches running up blocking uh, the distant land. But I want to, I want to experiment with that because you know, often things aren't that tidy and that's how it looks. It also serves to break up this line right here, which is, you know, kind of a straight line. I'm going to add little suggestions of rocks to break it up even more, but it's nice having these branches uh, to, you know, sort of intersect that line. All right, so I'm mixing up a saturated green here using uh, phthalo blue, cadmium yellow medium, and a touch of uh, lizard crimson, and I'll add some of this warmth in here. Again, trying to keep this warmer shape here unified. All right, adding some phthalo blue to the mix. It's more blue-green in some areas, so just including that. All right, so some titanium white here. And I just want to clean up the horizon a little bit. There we go, keeping that edge soft since there is fog out there. All right, so I wanna drop down the shoreline a little bit over here, maybe a little lower over here. And I've got a light gray mixture here just by adding some titanium white to my dark mixture. I'm gonna go back in here and lighten up these rocks. I'm constantly keeping the design uh, at the forefront of my mind. You know, in the past I would often just paint and then 
at some point step back and look at the composition but now I try to have uh, the composition in mind all the way through the process you know so I'm walking back 10 or 15 feet every few minutes I don't really show that you know in the in the video but um, that's what I'm doing uh, there's some white water along here and and there are some breaking waves kind of in this area. All right, so at this point I'm standing back and just looking at the design. And so far I do like what I'm seeing. I'm going to, you know, just add maybe a little bit of variety in some of these branches here, just some, maybe a little bit of brighter green. All right, so adding a saturated green here. Uh, but I wanna make sure that this green is dark enough that it stands out against the background water. And it seems like it is dark enough. And I want to leave some of the scrubby stuff from the early part of the painting. I don't want to eliminate all of that. There appears to be less light on uh, these branches over here so I'm using a darker green mixture this is the stage of the painting where I've got to be careful because you can really get too fussy and overwork things all right so let's take a look at the colors I did use a lot of titanium white and ultramarine blue uh, but the other colors there is plenty left and I didn't feel limited at all uh, with these colors. All right, so here's what I finished up with. And as I mentioned, I was trying to create a sense of depth, but also have a nice design and have some fun in the brushwork. Uh, so overall, I'm really happy with this painting. I do feel like it feels loose. It was all painted with a number eight natural bristle flat. I never needed to use the number six. Um, and I do, I like the colors too. I feel like there's good color harmony. So I'm going to try painting with this palette more often. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. It is the Patreon support that helps keep me making these videos, and it's much appreciated. Uh, I've got a bunch of extra videos on there and a materials list, so check it out. Other than that, stay creative, and I'll see you guys in the next video.